Listen carefully now. Human senses have three disadvantages. First, let us take the eye. It cannot perceive all rays or wavelengths, as physicists put it. We cannot see ultraviolet. The rays that our eye can see are infinitesimal in relation to those that exist. The second imperfection of our eyes is that they cannot distinguish as different objects that are located nearer than a particular distance. We see them as one. If there are two fires on a mountain and we go far away, we see them as one. And the third weakness of the eye is that it cannot perceive objects that are smaller than a certain magnitude. It doesn't see them at all. An example. Between us there are specks of dust, immense amounts of material. Do we perceive it? We call it a vacuum. But it is not a vacuum at all. There is an infinity of material that we do not perceive because of its small dimensions. Just think if we did not have those three imperfections. What would we see? Would we see the table? No. We would see its atoms. We would see its electrons. We would see even beyond the electrons the energy flow. Whatever we see around us would be a soup, thicker here and thinner there. We would not have the perception that this is a table, that this is a machine, this is a chair, that is my pipe. We would see a boundless soup with condensations and dilutions. My eye takes these condensations and dilutions and creates the illusion of an object and of color. Let us now take touch. You extend your hand and say, I am touching the table. You are not touching the table. The last structural material of your hand, the moment you say, I am touching the table, is relatively at an infinite distance from the first structural material of the table. You never do touch it. There is no contact? No. What happens? Around the particles that make up the table, there is an energy flow, and around the energy flow of my hand, forces develop that are repulsive. So when I go to put these particles close to each other, they repel, and neurons convey this repulsion to my brain and convert it to what we call contact. The message that reaches the brain is essentially an illusion. Of course it is an illusion. For if I did not have these neurons, I might not have sensed anything. This means that everything in the universe communicates with its neighbor. In other words, we are not two objects that are unrelated to each other. We are united by an infinite material that we do not perceive, that is in between. We are all one in the universe. Whatever occurs at one point in the universe, because we are a soup, impacts the whole universe. It alters the whole universe. Whoever succeeds in giving you the definition of matter will receive a Nobel Prize. There is no definition, justified definition, of the concept of matter. Matter is a philosophical category. Many have developed different theories about what is matter. This philosophical category is the oldest philosophical category. I will tell you the three most prominent views. Basically, we believe that what we call matter is a condensation of the energy flow, to which I referred previously, that occupies the entire universe. Its condensations, wherever there is a condensation of energy, and this condensation of energy we perceive through our senses, as we said, as matter. But we do not see it. We perceive the condensation as matter. We perceive it as matter. The matter of my pipe is a condensation with the unitary universal flux. This condensation, our senses as they are made up, perceive as that formalism called matter. The elementary particle, as we say. In other words, the element of matter is nothing other than an energy world.